Uh, so the next uh, speakers are split call and um, ballot one minute. I call Kiri Allen. Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and it is, uh, it is indeed a delight to speak in respect of the state sector and Crown Entities Reform Bill. Madam Speaker, reflecting on the general intent and purpose of these reforms, you've kind of got to feel a bit sorry for the, uh, the State Commissioner. Uh, poor old Peter Hughes, he's um, out there flogging the horse and doing his best that he can do to put up recommendations that are pragmatic, they make sense for the good governance of our Crown entities. He puts up these amendments, he goes through, does all of his due diligence. You know, he has a statutory function to, um, was it? to promote the spirit of service to the community. So he goes about, he does all this hard work, he puts up his recommendations on what the pay rise and thresholds should be uh, to these boards, and they ignore him. I, um, Dame Ribstop, uh, you know, she got a pretty clear direction. You know, OK, uh, 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 you know, the CEO, he's done a good job. Let's put his uh, wage up by 1%. It's already a hefty thwack anyway. It's up there in the $800,000 mark. But all right, he's doing a good job. We've got to stay competitive, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So all the advice came back. We'll give him a 1% rise. Well, the board, they took that into consideration. Uh, you know, they, they had to consult. They got some advice. But in the end, uh, the poor old State Commissioner, it doesn't have any teeth. So what this legislation does, it's a, it's a pragmatic approach to enable those with the statutory duties and responsibilities to ensure that our Crown functions and our state services are indeed promoting the spirit of our services to the community, that our State Services Commissioner can ensure that our state services uh, are promoting the interests of New Zealand, that we are being transparent, that there is integrity, that trust and integrity has been imbued into uh, our state services. And so, uh, sorry, ma'am, <laughs> Madam Chair, I mean, uh, several of my colleagues uh, made comments prior uh, that, uh, that the State Services Commissioner had made, and I just, I, I, I was reflecting on some of them as well. You no, know, um, it was talking about the upward trajectory of chief executive salaries in the state sector, and in particular some of the Crown entities. It's not sustainable, and it's time for change. And this was a direct response at that point to the New Zealand Super Fund, uh, then Chief Executive, receiving a pay increase of about 140 k which was a 36 per cent pay rise, if I recall correctly. Now, I, I must applaud uh, the Minister, uh, the Honourable Chris Hipkins, Minister of State Services, uh, in a very swift amount of time, uh, has managed to turn around some prudent and decent legislation uh, that addresses the concerns that the State, uh, that State Services Commissioner had raised, and indeed the former government uh, and the former Minister of Finance, uh, he too observed that there was a gross uh, uh, inconsistency between, I guess, yeah, goes to the, back to that point around the teeth that the Crown Commissioner, uh, sorry, that the State Commissioner has when it comes to making these recommendations. So. Um, Madam Chair, uh, part one of the bill makes these two key changes, as has been highlighted by the Minister, uh, requiring the boards of statutory Crown entities to obtain State Services Commissioner's written consent to the terms and the conditions of employment of a Chief Executive, and that that term for appointment is uh, limited for up to five years, uh, with the right to be able to be renewed. Now, again, uh, Madam Chair, the, the, the um, I guess, the, again, the pragmatic uh, rationale that sits below all of that is that you've got to, you've got a board that might not necessarily have appointed that chief executive, uh, who currently might, they can be in there for as long as they might like to be. So this, these amendments here, they put some suitable time constraints. Uh, and, again, increase the, I guess, the transparency and accountability of those chief executives uh, back upwards to their board and, again, 
uh, to the State Services Commissioner. So on these grounds, uh, Madam Chair, I'm pleased to commend this bill to, the, uh, to, to Select Committee.